Yeah, so I'll begin the session today. So, okay, so today we'll be uh, looking at one very important topic actually. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So, one important topic which is like probability. Okay, so this particular topic, uh, like you you have already studied in your uh, 11th and 12th class, but we'll be looking at something new in this topic, and uh, and that particular new topic which I'll be dealing with has like lots of applications, like be it in machine learning research or your let's say job interviews or like wherever you want this particular thing will be applied like you can't like in, in eventually you learn in learn this topics in your curriculum but it's better to learn it early and it's not something huge uh, to learn it early uh, like uh, like it's not that tough actually so it's better that i introduce you to this particular topic so that the tools are pretty nice actually in this particular area of probability yeah so before we go to uh, the new topics just let us uh, re revise like kind of revision of some old stuff in probability uh, in a more formal way so uh, usually uh, say we uh, roll a dice and we have a set of outcomes so say we roll a dice and we have a set of outcomes so the outcome of the dice can be one two three four five six so this is called a uh, sample space so set of all outcomes is called sample space and this we usually donate by this symbol omega okay so that is what we do um just give me one second. Yeah, and uh, if a dice is kind of fair dice, then probably uh, so the probability of one being your outcome, one as outcome, is one by six. So that's what we kind of learned in our eleventh and twelfth class. And the dice can also be un like it can have different probability. So let us actually define what probability function is. So probability is basically a function from your sample space to this interval 0, 1 such that um, for all x in the sample space, probability of x is uh yeah that's pretty much obvious from here so like so that's basically z it's between zero and one that's what this function means and if you sum over all elements in the sample space then summation of all such probability should be equal to one so this is what uh, we kind of learned in our let's say 11th and 12th class and your problems were mainly based on these kind of like using these basic stuff obviously you had many um, theorems like Bayes theorem and all we won't be touching those kind of stuff today uh, but we'll be touching a different stuff so for that I'll define a new function okay so let this be a function so this function is a function from your sample space to real number okay so uh, such uh, such functions are called random variables okay so you uh, so you can define a random variable to capture say this particular roll of dice so so maybe so it can so your random variable can be a uh, like a function from say from a sample space to some real number space uh, which we can think of so maybe like we can arbitrarily assign some values like 
So you can uh, write in this fashion. So your x of 1 means 1 as outcome. You can simply write as say 0 0.1, x of 2 as 0 0.2. Maybe x of 3 you can write as 0 0.5. It's your wish. You can define the function in whatever way you want. So this uh, function x is called a random variable. Okay. So uh, for roll of dice, we can just like for the sake of convenience, what we do is like x of one is one, x of two is two, x of three is three, you know. Like so, basically, your random variable x for a roll of dice uh, will denote the outcome in a way. So this will denote the outcome. Now, um, what's the advantage of such random variables? First thing is, is the ease of uh, writing mathematical equations. Like, so previously, as you could have seen here, I was writing probability that one will come as outcome. It's pretty verbose, like, and it's not Ma it doesn't look good mathematically. You want to write mathematical statements. Bro. So so now you have the luxury of writing probability of x equal to 1 is 1 by 6. So what does this mean? Probability that your uh, outcome of the dice is 1. So, so in this way you can mathematically write probability statements using this random variables. So random variables, just for recap, is a function okay from your sample space to a real number so that's your random variable so uh, so it's random variable part clear does everyone get what random variable is can yeah. someone confirm yeah yeah okay, yeah. Fine. yeah okay okay yeah pretty simple concept really. okay now uh, what i'll define now uh, okay, so what I okay, so suppose we have a random variable, okay, uh, which is from your sam, which maps the elements in sample space to real number space, then, um, then we define something called expectation of x, okay. Expect, expectation of x. Okay. Now, uh, you can consider the English meaning only. So, what, okay, so if I uh, perform, say, roll, if I roll a dice, what is the expected value? So, th that kind of thing is being captured by this expected value of x. So, mathematically, it's defined in this way. So it's like summation over all elements in this sample space and you have to multiply probability of x equal to x small x times x. So this is your uh, expectation of x. So if we look for the roll of dice, so random variable for roll of dice. So expectation of that would be, so 1 by 6 times 1 plus 1 by 6 times 2 plus 1 by 6 times 3 plus 1 by 6 times 4 plus 1 by 6 times 5 plus 1 by 6 times 6. So it's like you multiply the probability of basically what I'm doing. I'm multiplying the probability of x is equal to 1 times 1 plus probability of x equal to 2 times 2 and so on. So this is what I did. And if you calculate, it will turn out to be 3.5. So roughly you like when you uh, roll a dice, you can expect that its value can be 3.5. Doesn't mean that its value will be 3.5. Like on expectation, you can say that yeah, it's likely that the value is either 3 or 4. Like just an intuitive sense of what expectation is. So 
Uh, is the definition of expectation clear? Or is there a query, any query? No, it is clear. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I just forgot to tell one small point, like which I think you will know. So, if you have a sample space, and A is a subset of the sample space, then we call A as an event actually. So that's this, uh, uh, that's even looks like, so basically um, an event can be like the outcome of the dice is odd. So the out outcome is odd. That is nothing but that your set of outcomes is either one, three or five. And this is a subset of your sample space, uh, which is, one two six so this what i wanted to say but yeah it won't be required here but yeah just so now this expectation is quite helpful in many many places like there are a lot of uh things which revolve around this expectation of random variable so in today's uh talk we'll look at some particular problems but before that uh there is one very nice property of expectation which actually uh, helps us solve many many problems quite easily actually. So that is called linearity of expectation. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. So suppose um, your random variable x is a linear combination of some uh, some other random variables so so here uh, so here x1 x2 up to xn are some random variables so random variables in short i'll be writing as rv and a1 a2 up to an are some uh, real numbers okay so we have this, okay. And suppose uh, we we know the expected values of each of these random variables, okay. So we know e expectation of x1, we know expectation of x2, and so on. Uh, we know expectation of xn. Now what can be shown is that expectation of x is a1 times expectation of x1 plus a2 times expectation of x2 dot 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 a n times expectation of x n so this is what i'll just zoom out a bit so that you can see so this is what you can show so if your random variable is this of this form then your expectation is of this particular form so this allows us to solve some like problems which are in other case otherwise would have been very tough to solve like let's take the example of rolling of dice only okay now like let's okay um okay so let's let's consider this event like uh so this activity which we'll do like you're rolling a dice you're rolling a dice for three times. Okay. Okay. And uh, and the final and uh, you'll get three values. So you sum it up. So sum up the three values. Now, someone can ask a question: What is the expected value of this sum? Okay. So it would be a pretty tough task, like to now sit and do this, like probability that sum is equal to one times one, plus probability that sum is equal to two times two, and up to like, sum can be at most 18. So probability of sum is equal to 18 times 18. It's a very tedious task, like, like you can do it, but like it's hard work actually. So instead what you can do is that you can, so this, this sum, let us, uh, denoted by random variable x okay 
this sum you can further divide into three random variables x1 plus x2 plus x3 this this is the outcome of the first uh, roll of dice this is the second outcome and is a third outcome so we'll have expectation of x to be expectation of x1 plus expectation of x2 plus expectation of x3 and since we are rolling the same dice the expectation won't change so this is nothing but three times expectation of x1 and we calculated previously that it will be 3.5 so it's 3 into 3.5 which is 10.5 so see, like you just did it within one minute. Otherwise, if you, you just wanted to do it like if, by the definition, then it would have taken you a lot of time. So that's the advantage of this expectation, this particular formula. And um, that actually helps you in a lot of problems, which we'll see now. We'll see three such problems in the increasing order of difficulty. So before we go there, is, is the concept clear? Like whatever I told till now? Can someone come from? Yeah, it is like I just had one doubt. Like it yeah. wouldn't depend what we are taking, like x1, x2, x3, right? Like here. We are... like, so you have to define your x1 and x2 and x3 in such a way that it actually captures this sum. So ah, x1 yeah, is like the out, out. Yeah. Like if it satisfies the uh, condition that is given in the question, then we can just apply the linearity of expectation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you have to carefully frame the equation. So the framing this part said here, it's quite obvious that x is equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3. But every time framing this linear equation can be a bit tricky actually. So that's where your intelligence comes into the picture. And from there on, these expectation tools will take over. But forming this kind of equations is the trickiest part of any problem which you're trying to solve. So, uh, so now, now, like, let me save this first. Uh, okay. Um, okay. So we'll discuss three problems. Like I'll, I'll try to keep it short only. So, uh, um, okay. So just one second. I don't have much. Okay, fine, no problem. I'll see it later. So, so this is the first problem, which should be easy. Like, so you have ten letters. Uh, so you have n letters and n envelopes. And some guy comes and takes the letters and keeps it randomly in the n envelopes. Okay. Like he just chooses a random permutation of the n letters and he'll keep it in n envelopes. So basically you have letter numbers. So like so so the first letter, second letter, third letter, and so on. And similarly you have first envelope, second envelope up to n envelope. So the numbers are there. So so the first letter should ideally go to the first envelope. Second letter should ideally go to the second envelope and so on. So that, that's the correct placement. So if first letter is placed in first letter envelope, that's a correct placement. But if first letter is kept in second envelope, that's a wrong placement. So now the question is, what is the expected number of envelopes with correct letter inside them? So that's the question. So on expectation, how many uh, envelopes will have the correct letter inside them? So an, uh, an envelope I should have letter I inside it. So that's the question. So you can have a look at the question again. And uh, maybe like if someone gets the answer, they can speak up. Yeah. If there's any query in the question, you can ask. So I hope at least question is clear, right?
Yeah, uh, can someone confirm if the question is clear or not? Yes, it is. Okay, okay. Yeah, just try. Uh, maybe let's. Uh, this question shouldn't take that much time. Like it should take, yeah, pretty much one or two two minutes. I guess we can wait. Like it's not more worth more than two minutes question actually. And you can say like uh, the in quant com the companies which come in quant profile and all they like stress questions of this type. So it's better if you have solid grip over these kind of problems. And even in if someone wants to do say theoretical computer science research or some uh, yeah research something related to either theoretical computer science or some uh, machine learning related research. They'll require these expectations and all very heavily. Like you can't escape actually without uh, having grip over expectation. Yeah, so could anyone come up with any idea? Anyone any idea or like should I proceed with the solution? Like I just thought of the basic solution that needed like selecting one and envelope and then deranging and minus one. Selecting two and then deranging and minus two and then divide by n factorial. Ah, uh, that much. Uh, yeah, that's that's where mm -hmm. I told you, right? Use expectation linearity mm -hmm. carefully, because yeah, you can do all those stuff, but it will be very complicated. But we can simply break, uh, quite easily. So, so that's this how we'll do it. So, okay. So now what? we can do is like we can uh, uh, um, create oh sorry so we can uh, um, like create a random variable i subscript i okay uh, so if the ith letter is in ith envelope it will take one otherwise that uh, random variable will take a value of zero so if a random variable takes value either one or zero, we call it this indicator random variable. But yeah, no need of knowing that. But yeah, so this is how this i i is getting defined. Okay, now uh, this capital I is uh, can it will uh, let capital I denote the uh, number of letters which ended up in the correct envelopes actually. So so it's pretty easy to observe that capital I is summation of all this I1, I2 up to IN because what is I1? I1 denotes whether the um, envelope 1 is in, uh, sorry, the, whether the letter 1 is in envelope 1 or not. Similarly, I2 denotes whether the envelope 2 is in, uh, sorry, whether the letter 2 is in envelope 2 or not. And similarly, IN denotes whether the letter N is in envelope N or not. So when you sum it up, you get 
the total number of letters which is in the correct uh, envelope. So now each of this envelope is identical, which of this variable is identical. Like what is the expectation of this uh, ii? It's one by n. Reason being, I'll write it here. So that expectation of i i is nothing but probability that i i is equal to one times one plus probability that i i is equal to zero times zero. And since this is zero, it gets basically cancelled. So you just have to focus on finding probability that i i is equal to one. So if it do a random permutation, what is the probability that the ith letter ends up in the ith envelope, it's 1 by n. Because when you do a random permutation, the ith letter has an equal chance of ending up in any one of, any one of the envelopes. So uh, 1, 2, up to n. Uh, it has equal probability of ending up in any one of these envelopes. So, so every one will have the same chance. So 1 by n, 1 by n, up to 1 by n. And you sum it up, it will be 1. So that's why your expectation of i subscript i is 1 by n. And then, then if you use linearity of expectation, you will get that an uh, expected number of letters which ended up in the correct envelope is 1. So the correct answer is one here. So is this uh, solution clear or do you have any doubts? I have a doubt like uh, how do yeah. you decide which sort of uh, random variable we should take into consideration? So like uh, that's where you have to like use your brain in a way. Like at least in this, like there's no fixed set of rules that you can use the way we choose. But at least here, logically speaking, uh, so, okay, so logically speaking, think in terms of like how a child counts. So how will a child count whether uh, envelope is uh, there, like a correct envelope is placed in, correct, sorry, correct letter is being placed in correct envelope or not? It will open, right? Okay. It will check whether the first uh, letter is in first envelope or not. If it is uh, there, it will increase the count by one. Otherwise, it will keep the count as zero. Similarly, it will check whether the second envelope is in second, so second letter is in second envelope or not, and so on. So this is how you break your random variable into smaller random variables. So, so, so this i1 will denote whether the first uh, envelope has the correct letter or not. Second one will denote whether the second envelope will have the correct letter or not, and so on. And when you sum it up, it actually turns out to be the total number of correct letters. So that's how you have to think. Uh, this is the actual. That's what I was telling. This is the most important part. Like, how do you actually frame the equation? Like, once you are able to frame the equation, then it's very easy from there on. But yeah, you have to. Like, that's where you have to like. That's where experience comes in actually. Like, no one can teach you actually. Like, okay, this is how you do it. You go, you work on a lot of similar problems. Like you say, do a lot of study on other papers and all. And yeah, that's how you come up with this equation. So there's no one answer. Like, yeah, this is how you come up with these equations. Yeah. But at least I hope the solution is clear at least. Yeah, it's clear. And plus actually uh, this solution leads to a like uh, if we go by the traditional method, so it will lead to an identity. That's good. Ah. Yeah, yeah. And this is a very simple solution. Like you need not, it's a clever solution. So that's why expectation is quite helpful. If you want to do with the arrangements and all, then it will take, uh, like you can come up with the correct answer, but yeah, it won't be as sim simple as these guys. Yeah. Yeah. So this was the first question. Um, so let me check how much time is left. Okay, we have time maybe for one more question and then for the last question, we will give you as homework. Okay. Okay, so the question here is, uh, 
Um, so we have a set of numbers 1 to n and we draw n numbers randomly. OK, we randomly draw numbers and once we draw a number, we again uh, uh, redraw from the same set. So. So for example. So you have the set 1, 2, 3 up to n. So, so uh, and uh, another way of say, like another way of phrasing is like, say you have n-sided dice. Okay, you have n-sided dice and a chance of getting any, every number is equal actually. Like the chance of getting, like the probability of getting first, uh, like one as an outcome is one by n. Probability of getting second two as an outcome is one by n, and so on. Okay, so so uh, say you have this uh, n-sided dice. So first time you roll it, you get some numbers, say x1. Second time you roll it, you get some number x2, and so on. So you roll it, say for n times. So nth time you roll it you get some number xn, okay. So you have x1, x2, up to xn. So, um, so you, what you, you have to, okay, so now if you have a look at this set of numbers, you, it, it might happen that more, uh, some numbers are repeated actually. So it might happen that one was, one was the outcome in the first row and one was the outcome again in the second row. So what you have to count is the number of distinct numbers here. Okay, so say uh, say, uh, say n is equal to 5 and you were rolling 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1. So what is the dis na distinct, num tot distinct numbers, total number of distinct numbers? It is 3 actually. There are 3 distinct numbers in this sequence. 1, 2 and 3. So the question is, so the question is, uh, find the expected number of distinct numbers actually. Which you'll see by doing this roll of dice. So that's what is the question. I elaborated it. You can have a look at the questions like given the set of numbers 1 to n, we draw n numbers randomly from this set. What is the expected number of distinct values which we would draw? So that's the question which you have. I hope the question is clear. And um, yeah. Uh, and then from here also, yeah, we can do, uh, we can proceed actually. So for this question also, say I'll give you um, at least uh, come. Uh, some, can someone confirm if the question itself is clear or not? Yeah, it is clear. Okay, okay. So uh, just try this question. <coughs> at least, uh, yeah, like at least try to uh, like. At least try to come up with this kind of equation, which I was like mentioning here. This kind of equation you try to come up for this problem. Need not solve it, just try to come up with such equation. <coughs> so I'll wait till two, three minutes, I'll wait. And then we'll have the discussion on this problem also.
OK, uh, so this question, what we'll do is that we'll solve it together. Like. Let's like let's solve it together. So. Uh, at least like. Uh, can someone could someone come up with any kind of equation like if they let us say like we denote the total number of distinct numbers or values which we'll see. Uh, distinct values, yeah, that would be better. Number of distinct values. Uh, distinct values. So. Like uh, I came up with uh, like uh, we can say like uh, uh, just like yeah. the previous question. If we say yeah, yeah. I one is the case that one appears in our draw. Ah, yeah, just one. Yeah, just just one. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Yeah. You are on the right path. So. Yeah, so 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 we have to say this. Thing. So you're so you're telling uh, 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 it is basically one if I appeared. And it is zero if I did not appear. Yes, yes. Sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the correct formulation. Now, uh, what is the probability that uh, sorry? Uh, now, what is the expected value of I? I? So, so if you solve that, then your answer, your question is solved. So, uh, at least the first step is pretty easy. Like, it's equal to probability of I, I equal to one. Similar logic here, same same thing. So now, now what is the probability that? Uh, I I is equal to one, so like probably that the number I will appear. Okay. Is it one by n? No, no, it's not one by n. So it's okay. I'll give you one more hint. Okay, now try to compute. The probability that the number I won't appear. So what is the probability that in none of the uh, like roll roll of dice say number I won't appear? OK, say this thing. What is the prob probability that I won't appear in the first roll of the IC? So you have n numbers. And what n is the? One uh, by n. Yeah, that is n minus one by n. And uh, what is the probability that uh, this will not happen for n times? So plus two to the, like to the power. Ha, huh, yeah. So this is nothing but n minus one by n to the power n. So now this expected value of I is nothing but N times expected value of say I I because all of them are identical. So you have this particular thing. So that's your answer. So yeah, so see that's how we solve this kind of questions. Uh, directly if I had like you have to think step by step. So instead of directly thinking over the final, so, so what can I do? This is the first thing which you did. That's fine. That's actually great. Then there's the second thing. From here you go like this, and then you do like this, and then you end up doing this. So that's how you solve some such problems. That's what, what we call. This is yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I want to comment like this is very similar to double counting, you know, permutation combination. Ah, uh, that's like all these are interlinked. That I won't deny. The permutation combination will eventually appear, but uh, the fact is that there are some questions which are like quite tricky actually. Uh, like the next question, which uh, let's see whether we can solve it here or not. But now this question is actually pretty tricky actually. Um, so what we have is like say. <coughs> uh, 
Okay. Uh, just uh, one second. Is it that we are mistake here? Ah, huh, okay. So, um, say you have uh, these cards. Okay. You have 52 cards. You shuffle it and then you spread it on the uh, table. Okay. Now, you you now may uh, divide this into uh, chunks actually. Like, how do you divide? So, um, so the first chunk is like all colors together, RRR together. This is first chunk. Then the second chunk is the next color together, BBB. Then R, then B, then R, then B. So there are six chunks here, which is RRR, BBB, R, B, R, B. So, so another example would be, say if uh, say uh, I do it like RRR, B, B, R, R, B, R. B, B, R. So how many chunks can we divide it? So one, a chunk will have continuously same color actually. So this is the first chunk. So this is the second chunk. This is the third chunk. Fourth chunk. Fifth chunk. Sixth chunk. Seventh chunk. So these are all chunks actually. So, so the question is now that there we have 52 cards. Okay. 26 are red. 26 are blue and now if we like like take a uniform permutation like we take a permutation and then then spread it then uh, what is the uh, expected value of total uh, number of chunks so that is the question which you have so this is what you have. So you can read the question. This is a question which we have. So I'll just read it out. So there are 26 black and 26 red cards in a standard deck. A run is a number of blocks of consecutive cards of the same color. So for example, a sequence of 11 cards has 6 runs. R, 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 B, 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 R, B, R, B. Find the expected number of runs in a shuffle deck of cards. So that's what you have. So, yeah, so now such questions, if you try to go by combinatorics and all, it will be pretty tough actually, like I can guarantee you. Like just try you will like, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty tough actually. But if you use expectation, actually it turns out to be very easy problem actually. So do you want to try now or like should I give it as a homework? You, the choice is yours. So tell me, what should we do? So like uh, it depends on how much time it will take to strike the idea. Uh, yeah. yeah, so like if you take uh, time, you can give it as homework, then we'll think and you can just post the solution a day or two later. I, okay, what I'll do, I'll paste I'll keep the slide. Okay. Just don't see mm -hmm. the last two slides. Okay. The last two slides has the solution. So mm -hmm. you see the slide even if, if you want, I'll just go in full screen mode. You take this screenshot better. And then you try it. The question is not easy. Okay, that I will, I can guarantee you. Like now here, formulating uh, the random variables is not like actually. When you look at the final solution, you will feel yeah, it, it was so easy. But actually, the careful observation now uh, will be uh, required. Actually, so yeah, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, so better uh, you can try. Uh, uh, maybe like uh, at least not solving the problem, but uh, can someone like at least for two, uh, let's see up to nine uh, seven fifty five. 
can someone think about how can we like construct this kind of equation like this equation this kind of equation like so say your uh, random variable is uh, again this uh, say some uh, s like a number of uh, so you are denoting a random variable for the total number of chunks so what can you do actually like uh, so how we can you split it up okay what can you do so yeah so that's the question that's the main question actually after from there on it's very easy yeah so let's wait 2 3 minutes if you can't so nobody can come up with the solution then yeah I, i would say as a hint try to look at this sequence only this particular sequence of 11 cards so we have six chunks okay now how are these six chunks getting like what can you do so that like you can capture this number six okay what can you define like what kind of random variables can you define think how a chunk is getting created so that's the pretty much the hint which i can give and then if you can catch all of that then from there on the problem it becomes easy let's wait till 2 3 minutes and let's see if anyone comes up with a solution or not otherwise yeah fine can you see like the occurrence of rp or br Yeah, yeah, pretty near, pretty near. But uh, tell me something more. Yeah, yeah. Tell me more concretely. Okay. Yeah, you're you're pretty near. Of a uh, number of occurrences of R B or B R. But um, yeah. But yeah, can you call like tell me in terms of a random variable? So look at the ith position, and what random variable can you define for it? it's fine if you don't come up with the solution i mean i yeah it's like pretty i i don't expect because like this is the first time you are learning this entire concept so yeah but this concepts are quite useful uh maybe in some future uh, so you guys have exam from 14 next week mostly we'll touch uh, some graph problems which you guys requested um yeah um just one second yeah so fine it's okay if you can't but someone who told rb and br just think along that line only like what random variable can you define to capture our occurrence of rb and br so yeah once you get hold of that then yeah you're done yeah